Today, the great home price unwinding. Hello again, I'm Martin North, the Principal Analyst at Digital Finance Analytics. Welcome to our latest post covering finance and property news with a distinctively Australian flavour. Now, it's important to understand that the great home price unwinding is not just happening in Australia. Falls are occurring in Hong Kong, the UK, Canada and the USA. So today we look in more detail at the US market via a post from Wall Street. And by the way, if you value the content we produce, please do consider supporting our efforts. You can make a one-off donation via PayPal, here's the link, or consider joining our Patreon program. Again, here is the link. We really appreciate your support, which helps us to continue to make great content. And the links are also in the comments below. Data from the US shows that the sales of existing homes, single family houses, townhouses, condos, and co-ops across the US in January dropped 8.5% from a year earlier to a seasonally adjusted annual rate of 4.94 million homes, according to the National Association of Realtors, after having dropped 10.1% year over year in December and 8.9% in November. All three were the biggest year over year drops since May 2011, during the final throes of Housing Bust 1.0. This decline in sales volume is occurring despite the large drop in mortgage rates since early November, but the industry remains hopeful. And the report says existing home sales in January were weak compared with historic norms. However, they are likely to have reached a cyclical low. Moderating home prices combined with gains in household income will boost of housing affordability, bringing more buyers to the market in the coming months, they said. Now, I don't find that very convincing, given the data on home sales volumes since late 2017. By category, sale of single family houses in January dropped 8.4% from a year earlier to a seasonally adjusted annual sales rate of 4.37 million. Condo sales dropped 9.5% year over year to a rate of 570,000. And by region, with the West consistently in the deepest trouble, Northeast down 1.4% to an annual rate of 700,000, Midwest down 7.9% to an annual rate of 1.16 million, South down 8.4% to an annual rate of 2.08 million, and West down 13.8% to an annual rate of just 1 million. In fact, the inventory of homes for sale at the end of January rose 4.6% year over year to 1.59 million homes. And the current rate of sales, this represents 3.9 months supply. Now, this is not a fiasco level, but it's up nearly 15% from a year ago. And declining sales and rising inventories are gingerly starting to have an impact on prices at the national level, something which we've seen play out more brutally on the local level. The median price in January was $247,500, and that was still up 2.8% from a year earlier. The lowest year-over-year -year increase since 2012, with house prices rising 3.1% and condos remaining flat. There is a fundamental disconnect between wages and home prices. When nominal wages rise 2 to 3% and home prices surge 5 to 12% year after year, as they have done, sooner or later something has to give. Home prices cannot forever outrun wages because it eliminates layer after layer of buyers. And when there are no buyers at a price point, there is no sale. And for there to be a sale, the price has simply to come down. So medium home prices by region show that in the northeast they're up 0.4% year over year to 270,000. Midwest they're up 1.4% at 189,700. In the south they're up 2.5% year over year to 214,800. And in the west they're up 2.9% year over year to 374,600. The disconnect between prices and where the buyers are was pointed out by the NAR report, though from a slightly different perspective. Inventories are rising, and there is no shortage of housing per se, but it's the wrong kind of inventory after years of sharp price increases. In particular, the lower end of the market is experiencing a greater shortage. And the NAR report explained that shortage at the low end exists because prices have outrun incomes. 
Now there's no magic to it, the market can fix that. When sellers are motivated enough to make deals and cut prices across the spectrum to where the buyers are. But this doesn't happen overnight, it happens over the years, market by market, and eventually it shows up in the national averages. So there's a whole generation looking forward to the moment when they can afford to buy a home in these out-of-whack markets, though that's still a while off. Those are the buyers of the future, and eventually prices will have to meet them. There are a host of other economic benefits triggered by lower home prices, such as buyers having more money left over to spend on other things, which would give other parts of the economy a sorely needed boost. Gradually unwinding some of the home price inflation of recent years is not the end of the world. And so to conclude, the market, if it's allowed to, can fix the affordability problem that exists in many cities in the US and beyond by finding price levels where first-time buyers can afford to buy a home with the income they're making. Sellers are having to step down the aspirational ladder to make deals, and in some of these markets, price levels have a long way to go before they make sense, where a household with a median income on the local scale can afford a median home. And there are now enough local housing markets that have turned south to where the impact is starting to creep into national averages. Read that back to Australia. And of course, we've had flat wages for several years now. In fact, income is in real terms lower than it was five years ago. And we've had massive rises in home prices up 70% in Sydney and Melbourne. And that has led to the pricing instability, which has translated in some cases now to price falls of up to 40% in some places. But the key point is, prices will continue to fall until wages and prices come back into kilter. And so we have to expect more falls ahead. And did you notice something else about the US numbers? The average home price in the US is significantly lower relative to income than here in Australia. So you can once again see how big a hole we have dug ourselves. And it's my prediction that it will take four to five years to bring prices back to a level to where the average household on the average income will be able to afford the average house. The runway just ran out and the very minor uptick in auction clearance rates which have been reported since the new year are not signalling a turnaround in the market. In fact, if you look carefully, the absolute volumes are more than 50% lower than they were this time last year. And that is the more significant yet underreported factor. So the final point I want to leave you with is that the fall in home prices is much more to do with a fundamental deleveraging and the fact that housing affordability is off the scale for people on average incomes at the moment, both here and in other places around the world. And as lending standards are pulled back to more normal levels, there is only one direction that home prices are likely to go, and that is down and down again. If you liked what you saw here today, please like the post and add a comment or question. I read them all. And do share it via your social media channels. If you've not yet subscribed, please ring that subscribe bell to receive alerts on future posts. And if you have already subscribed, many thanks. I really appreciate your support. I'm Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Many thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.